Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, I've got 10 of my favourite animal attacks books for you. So animal attacks books have been a staple of the horror genre since at least the 1970s um, and I always have a fantastic time with them. I think there's just something fun about um, horror setups where it is humans against animals rather than humans against humans. There's something a little bit nicer <laughs> about that where where the, the violence and gore is um, inflicted on humans by animals rather than by other humans. Um, it stops you that you know there's something about like serial killer books and something like that that digs a bit too deep into the dark side of the human psyche isn't there um, and you tend not to get that with with animal attacks books so they for that reason i think they are more purely entertaining than other kinds of horror novels often um, i would say as well greg from the channel another bibliophile reads did a great video on animal attacks books recently i'll link to it in the description for this one he showed off his collection uh, and greg has got a fantastic collection of animal attacks books um, so do check that out if it's a, a subgenre of horror that you enjoy um, so today i've got 10 books for you all of which i really enjoyed i'm not going to say that all of them are really good books because they, they, they aren't necessarily necessarily all fantastic books but they're all books that I had a good time with um, they are in no particular order but I'm going to start with the big what I consider to be the big two the two books that really kick-started the genre in the 70s both came out I think in the same year 1974 um, and those books are The Rats by James Herbert and Jaws uh, by Peter Benchley um, so let's talk about The Rats first. So The Rats is just such a fantastically gruesome and horrible book. It really is graphic. Um, Herbert spares no punches at all. Anybody can be um, the, a victim of the rats of any age. So, you know, old people are killed by the rats. A baby is killed by the rats. It really is a horrific book. Um, and it really taps into um, the kind of vibe of 70s Britain. You know, it feels like a very depressed, rundown place. The shadow of the Second World War, you know, kind of looms over um, the whole book. Uh, but it's just fantastically gripping and entertaining as well. And the thing that Her Herbert has always done well in his books is his set pieces. Uh, and The Rats is no exception. There's some fantastic set pieces in it. And he's also very good at, at creating... In, in just a few pages, characters you become invested in, who we then kills in, in horrible fashion. Um, so the rats, I, I think, is a, a classic of the animal attacks genre. Um, Jaws, then, I don't think is as good a book. Um, I think I like Jaws more than some people do. A lot of people seem to have a bit of a downer on Jaws. Um, and admittedly, it is not as good as the film. So, you know, people oft, always say that the book is better, don't they? Um, when talking about uh, book-to-movie adaptations. But I think Jaws is a great example where the film is better than the book. But I still think the book uh, has a lot to offer. It's a gripping, uh, you know, a gripping, exciting tale um, of, you know, man against nature. Um, and you, you get a lot of the stuff that will be familiar um, from the movie as well as some other stuff as well. Um, Peter Benchley does, you know, a really good job of ramping up the tension as the book goes on. And it's just, a, you know, a fun summer read. Um, Benchley, you know, unlike Herbert, who went on to have a very successful career writing all sorts of different horror books, Benchley never really, you know, achieved the success of Jaws again. He wrote, you know, a few other books um, about, like, you know, killer squids and things like that, but he's, he was never as successful as Jaws. And I think, you know, Jaws is an important book for us culturally um, because, uh, you know, because it is a, you know, a foundational book for the animal attacks uh, subgenre, as, as is the rat, but also because it kind of launched the career of, of Steven Spielberg. So, you know, clearly Spielberg had made movies before, um, before Jaws. He'd done a lot of TV stuff um, in particular, but the success of Jaws, you know, really gave his career the boost it needed. And I think, you know, if you try and imagine what popular culture today would be like without the influence of Steven Spielberg, it's kind of hard to do, isn't it? He's such a, uh, you know, a monumental figure in, in Hollywood. Um, so, yeah, I th I, I'm, I'm not saying that without the book Jaws, Spielberg wouldn't have been a successful filmmaker, but I definitely think, you know, having that source material helped, uh, you know, helped his career in the early days. 
Um, moving on then, so another British one. Uh, so following on from the rats, we've got Slugs by Sean Hudson. Now this is my favourite Animal Attacks books, hands, hands down. I really think it's fantastic. As the title suggests, it's about killer slugs. Now you may not think that killer slugs are you know, particularly threatening, given, <laughs> given that slugs are tiny and you can squash them with your foot and they don't move very quickly. But Hudson, you know, manages to to weave a reasonably tense and definitely very gory tale um, using slugs as, as the creature. It's just a really, really fun book. He does some he's, he's incredibly creative with his uh, with his scenes of gore. Um, and he th he weaves some other stuff in it as well. So not only do the slugs um, eat people who've kind of fallen over and can't get up, um, but there's also something in them uh, that if they've like crawled over something that people eat, it infects their brains with these horrific worms that then pop out of their heads at, at inopportune moments. Um, so yeah, a really, really enjoyable, gruesome, cheesy, uh, B-movie uh, kind of book. I absolutely love slugs. Uh, next up, something a bit more recent. Uh, so this is Devolution by Max Brooks. So this is a uh, like a Sasquatch or Bigfoot novel. Um, Max Brooks is actually the, the son of uh, Mel Brooks, the actor, um, but has written uh, a couple of novels. So he, he also wrote, more famously, World War Z. Um, Devolution is just a really fun kind of monster type book um, with a, a small community um, pitched against uh, Bigfoot or Big Feet because there are several of them. Um, just a really entertaining, well-crafted um, novel. It's got that kind of found footage kind of a vibe to it um, with lots of different strands that, that pull together to make the story. I had a really good time with it. I, I thought it was a very, very enjoyable modern horror novel. Um, Next, another Killer Shark book, uh, so Meg by Steve Alton. So, so Alton's written a number of books in the Meg series. Obviously, they've been filmed, uh, the first two have been filmed now recently with, with Jason Statham, but just a purely entertaining, um, you know, Killer Shark book. He doesn't, it, so Steve Alton at no point is trying to do anything other than entertain the reader in the most often in the most ridiculous ways possible um, but yeah just pure entertainment from beginning to end probably in many ways a more a more purely entertaining book than Jaws um, but yeah definitely worth checking out I need to read more in the series I think I've only read the first two so far uh, I've got a few of them on my Kindle which I, I need to get to um, Next then, Cujo, because obviously you can't do a horror list without including Stephen King. Um, so Cujo is such a good book. I reread it recently and it blew me away. Um, and what's fantastic about it is A, that the, the ramp up is so gradual. So the, uh, you know, obviously it's about a rabid St. Bernard, um, but it's only towards the very end that the, the true action kicks in. But he manages to keep you as the reader turning the pages throughout that build up. And then the thing that is just wonderful and heartbreaking about the book is the fact that Cujo is kind of doing this stuff against his will. So he is a, an absolute monster being, you know, a huge, huge dog and, you know, rabid and, and vicious as a result. But he knows deep inside that what he is doing is wrong. And that makes the book very moving and, and Cujo a, a fantastic monster in the kind of classic monster sense of being someone that you do feel a bit of sympathy for um, as well as being terrified of. Um, next another very silly uh, animal attacks book so this is Night of the Crabs by Guy and Smith uh, which features huge killer crabs terrorising a, a Welsh fishing village. Um, so Guy and Smith was a very, very prolific uh, horror writer in the UK in the 70s and 80s in particular. Um, Night of the Crabs, you know, published in the wake of the rats when British horror pub uh, when British publishers would publish pretty much anything with ki with killer animals in it. It is a very, very entertaining book. Um, it, it, you know, it's very dumb, but it's a lot of fun. Um, and it feels often like a throwback to the kind of 50s style of... Of, of monster movie um, with you know kind of scientists going up against huge radioactive killer animals it's it's that kind of horror um, but very very entertaining um, and supposedly was the inspiration for Sean Hudson as well so Sean Hudson apparently read Night of the Crabs and figured that uh, if that could get published anything could be published and so tried his hand at, at writing and, and had a very successful career thereafter. Um, moving on then, another one which you, you may have already read, uh, Jurassic Park by uh, Michael Crichton. So just um, 
just a fun, fun book. So obviously, you know, the movie is very well known, but the, the book is very worth checking out if you haven't as well. Um, you know, just the concept of dinosaurs being, being brought back uh, and then naturally terrorising everyone um, is a, a just, it's a hugely entertaining and immediately appealing concept. I remember as soon as I heard about the book Jurassic Park, long before the movie came out, as soon as I heard about the book, I wanted to read it just because that concept is so fantastic. And the book does not disappoint. It does feel at, at times like, and, and lots of Michael Crichton books feel like this, like it was written almost as an outline for for a movie rather than as a book in its own right so you know like he always wrote it intending to sell the film rights um, but that doesn't take away from the fact that it's a very very entertaining book okay two more to go then um, next up another silly British horror novel probably the worst book in this list but I still have a bit of a soft spot for it uh, and that's The Cats by Nick Sharman so a, um, a very silly book about uh, killer cats uh, terrorising the UK uh, which culminates with um, hordes and hordes of cats attacking London um, and getting incinerated by flamethrowers so if you're a cat lover this may not be the book for you um, but it is it is a lot of fun and it has some fantastic set pieces as well including one where one of the characters is on LSD and is hallucinating all kinds of stuff as they get attacked by by the killer cats um so yeah very silly very entertaining um partly the reason i have a soft spot for it is there's a bit um towards the end of the book where the hero drives past the house that i was living in at the time the book was published um so yeah that that for me was kind of the icing on the cake for that book um and then finally, a book that's very different from uh, from all of the others on this list, uh, and that's Hellhound by Ken Greenhall. So this is a really interesting book, and probably more of a psychological thriller than a horror novel in, in many ways, um, about this, this vicious dog called Baxter, um, who teams up with a, an equally vicious uh, young young kid um, and terrorises the neighbourhood. Um, and what's interesting about the book is it's partly told from, from Baxter, the dog's perspective, uh, and Baxter is a complete sociopath, um, but very, very entertaining to read as well. So he's a very memorable character. Um, in fact, so much so that, it, that just thinking about the book makes me want to read it again. So um, definitely an animal to tax book, but very different from, from many in the genre, um, and well worth checking out as a result. So I hope you found that interesting. Let me know your favourite animal attacks books uh, in the comments. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.